All right, so today I'm gonna to be sharing a delicious kind of date night dinner at home. So we've got Valentine's Day coming up, and honestly, my husband and I have not even celebrated really Valentine's Day for years. I mean, we'll usually like, hey, what are we gonna to do tonight? And so we'll make something at home or order a pizza, watch a movie maybe, but I'd rather sit at home in our jammies than go out to dinner and spend $100 sitting next to another couple. Like, I don't know, it's just that whole thing to me it just doesn't sound like a lot of fun, but I know others who celebrate it and love it, and I think that's awesome. So this is gonna be an awesome meal that you can make for anyone. It doesn't have to be for that special someone in your life. It could be for your mother or your dad or your sister or brother. So if we haven't met before, my name is Ange. Welcome. And this is the Menu Made Kitchen. On the menu today, we are going to be doing a Salisbury steak in a mushroom gravy. It is so easy to make and it's just like mouthwatering good. My husband kind of grew up on Salisbury steak and he loves it. So I'm going to make that. And then I'm also going to do a creamy mashed cauliflower. If you don't want to do that, just do some creamy mashed potatoes, but that's what I'm gonna be doing for one of the sides. And then I'm gonna make kind of a lemony Parmesan green salad. And then we're gonna do an easy microwavable mug cake. It's gonna be so good. I'm actually gonna start on the cauliflower first. And once I get that prepped, I'm gonna put it into the oven and keep it on warm while I get the steaks ready and prep the salad really quick because that doesn't take very much time at all. All right, so I have just been working on getting my cauliflower uh, here cut up into little small florets. I just had a really small head, which is perfect because it's just my husband and I. So I, what I'm basically doing is just cutting these into small florets. I'm gonna add them to this bowl here that I have about a half a cup of water in, and then we're gonna cover this and put this in the microwave for about 10 minutes or so until the cauliflower is nice and soft. And then we're gonna transfer it to a food processor with just a couple of really simple ingredients and blend it until it's silky smooth like it's just so easy and it's super delicious and especially since we're making a gravy it will be perfect and i just want to note that if you have like a long kind of a long stem on here you are going to want to remove that because this is pretty fibrous the stem is and um, we want this cauliflower to be really silky smooth so getting rid of some of that stem will help make sure that there's not any kind of graininess in the mashed cauliflower. Okay, that is it. So I'm just gonna cover this. I have these little handy microwavable covers that actually my best friend got me. I love them. I don't have to use saran wrap. I just pop this over the top and it acts as like a seal. So I'm gonna pop this in the microwave for 10 minutes and then we'll see you here in just a few minutes. All right, so my cauliflower is cooked and I'm just gonna transfer it using this little slotted spoon here into my food processor. There's a little bit of liquid at the bottom and you just wanna make sure to kind of drain that off. You don't want the extra liquid in here because this will continue to like steam and create its own little bit of liquid. We just don't want the extra stuff at the bottom. Okay, and then to our cauliflower, I have about one ounce of cream cheese and then I have about two tablespoons of butter. So if you go onto the um, recipe on my website, it calls for two ounces of cream cheese, but since I'm doing a smaller head of cauliflower, I didn't want to use quite as much cream cheese, but I did use the same amount of butter because I want this to be just buttery and rich. And then we're going to add in a little bit of salt. I'm going to do about a half a teaspoon, not too much because again, we're going to be putting the gravy over this from the Salisbury steak and then a little bit of pepper. And that's pretty much it. Now, if you want to add in some garlic or some other seasonings, feel free. But again, because we're putting gravy over this, I wanted this to be really simple. So if you're making mashed potatoes, keep it really simple. Just use some butter, milk, salt and pepper, and then just let the gravy like kind of stand out and be the, the showstopper. Okay, so I'm going to get this blended up until it's nice and creamy. Okay, that is perfect. I'm just gonna give it a little taste to make sure it doesn't need any more salt, but it's just nice and creamy, just like mashed potatoes. I love it. All right, that is perfect. So I'm gonna transfer this mixture to a bowl and I'm gonna cover it with foil and we're gonna pop it in the oven and just keep it on warm while we get the rest of the meal prepared. All 
All right, so for our Salisbury steak, I'm gonna start with a bowl here. I like to mix up the Salisbury steak mixture just like I would meatloaf. I start with all the other ingredients and then I add the ground beef last because I like to incorporate those ingredients first. I just feel like everything gets um, combined better that way. So we're gonna start with, I've got a half of a green pepper diced really small, and then I have about a half a cup of chopped celery that I've also diced really small. So we're gonna add that in, and this just gives it really nice flavor and texture. And then I'm also gonna add in a quarter cup of almond flour in the name of keeping things a little bit low carb. You can definitely add oats, you can add um, breadcrumbs, and then I've got dried mustard here. You can also use yellow mustard or what's it called? <laughs> Dijon mustard. So I'm going to do one teaspoon of ground mustard and this just gives it a little bit of depth and it just adds good flavor. And then we're going to add one teaspoon of dried parsley. We're also going to add in a half a teaspoon of onion powder and you can really play with these flavors. If you want to do some garlic in here, if you want to make it spicy and add some red pepper flakes, it's pretty forgiving. Like it's kind of like a meatloaf, only we're making steaks and um, doing it that way. And then we're gonna add in one egg. And because our gravy is pretty salty, I'm just gonna do just a light pinch of salt, just a little bit. So probably less than a half a teaspoon. And then I'm also gonna add in a little bit of ground black pepper. Okay, so we're just gonna mix this up until it's pretty well combined and all the ingredients have a chance to come together here. And we have that egg all mixed up. And now we're gonna add in our ground beef. Gotta get this bad boy cut open here. So we'll add that in. Okay, and then I have clean hands, so I'm gonna actually mix this with my hands because I just feel like I can combine it so much better. But if you wanna use a spoon and do it that way, feel free. Basically, I'm just gonna incorporate the beef with the veggies and the egg mixture, and then we will start forming these into little steaks. All right, so I have a large plate here, and I wanna probably get about five patties out of this. That's way more than my husband and I need for dinner, but this will make great leftovers. We can make sandwiches out of this tomorrow. So I'm gonna try and get this into five patties, and I am gonna shape them like a Salisbury steak. You want them to kind of be oval shaped. I won't be perfect at this, so don't judge me. We're just gonna do the best that we can. So you can see I've just tried to portion out like five shapes. It's not gonna be perfect measurements here. Again, we're home cooks. We're just doing the best we can. So fun fact about Salisbury steak, um, I didn't know if you knew this, but Salisbury steak actually was created by a guy by the name of James Salisbury. And he was an American physician and chemist, I believe. And he, he advocated like a um, meat centered diet. Like he, he was all about promoting a diet that was centered around meat. And so he created the Salisbury steak. That's that's what I know about Salisbury steak. Maybe there's other stories out there, but um, I thought that that was kind of interesting. Okay, we've got all of our little guys made. And if you wanna put these into round patties, that's totally fine. This is just like the traditional Salisbury steak shape. So that's what we were gonna go with. And it was actually really easy to do. So, okay, we're gonna get these into the skillet and move on with the rest of the steps. We're gonna add one tablespoon of butter to our skillet here and get this melted. And then I'm just gonna sear the steaks on both sides until they're golden brown, but I'm not gonna cook them through all the way. Once they're golden brown on both sides, that'll take about three minutes or so per side. I'll transfer them to a plate and then we'll start making our mushroom gravy.
All right, so we're gonna add one more tablespoon back to our hot pan here. I've just removed my steaks and we're gonna get our mushrooms in here and start cooking those down. So I've got an eight ounce container of sliced Baby Bella mushrooms. I just went the easy route and got pre-sliced, but you can definitely buy whole button mushrooms and do it yourself. Um, so we're gonna add this in. And I'm also gonna pour in about a tablespoon of water. Okay, now that our mushrooms have browned and they're softened, you guys, it smells so delicious in here. I'm gonna add in one and a half cups of beef stock, and I'm gonna do one teaspoon of Worcestershire and about a half a teaspoon of onion powder. And I'm just gonna mix that all together. I'm gonna bring it to a low simmer, and then we're gonna add a little bit of thickener to create kind of our gravy. Okay, and while that's coming to a simmer to this small bowl here, I'm gonna add in about one teaspoon of cornstarch and just a little bit of cold water just to help melt the, the cornstarch. And then now that this is simmering, I'm gonna go ahead and add in the cornstarch and that will help like thicken our sauce. So now that that is simmering pretty good, we're gonna add our Salisbury steak back into the pan and it's gonna finish cooking and the sauce will just continue to thicken. All right, so our Salisbury steak is finished cooking. It's in the pan with the lid on it, staying warm. So I'm gonna put together a really simple salad. This was a recipe that I saw on Instagram a couple of years ago and I fell in love with it, you guys. It is like the simplest salad ever, but so delicious. And it's a great salad to have like even for lunch with some chicken on it, but I just love it. It's very fresh. So I'm gonna chop up some romaine lettuce leaves. I've got some olive oil some fresh lemon slices, and then some grated Parmesan cheese. That's it. You can season it with a little salt and pepper if you want, but that's pretty much it. So I'm gonna get this lettuce chopped and then um, we'll move on with the rest of the steps. Okay, so now that we have our romaine lettuce chopped up, I'm gonna add in about a quarter cup or so of the olive oil. So I'm gonna add that just over the top of the lettuce leaves and I'm gonna give it a toss. And then I'm gonna squeeze over pretty much all of these lemon slices. This is about one and a half lemons. I'm just gonna squeeze that over the top, give it a toss. And then we're gonna add in our Parmesan cheese. And you definitely want a good amount of parm. So if you think that you're adding too much, add a little bit more is what I say. So after we've tossed the olive oil, the lemon juice, we'll add in the parm and give that a good toss. And I might add a little pepper over the top to make it look pretty and that's it. I'm gonna sprinkle a little bit of pepper on there just because I wanna make it look pretty. We'll keep these guys in there. And that's it, dinner is served. Okay, I just wanted to show you, look how beautiful and fun that is. Such a delicious meal. So my husband's not home yet, but I wanted to try this. For you, we gotta make sure everything tastes just right before we enjoy dinner tonight. My mouth is seriously watering. I am just so excited about this. Okay, so we're gonna try the Salisbury steak first. Ooh, it's nice and tender. I mean, you gotta have the perfect bite, right? Like a little bit of the creamy cauliflower with gravy. Oh my word. If I were in heaven right now, oh my gosh, like, 
if you've never had creamy mashed cauliflower before, well, this really would technically wasn't mashed. It was done in a food processor, but it is so luscious and delicious. Like I almost like it better than mashed potatoes. Plus I feel like it's a little bit lighter. It doesn't feel so heavy. This is such a special meal and you know, you don't have to wait for a special date night or Valentine's day to enjoy something like this because you saw it, it was really easy to put together. It'd be great for company. It's just such a wonderful meal. Okay, and then we got to try the salad. All right, here we go. We're going in for a big bite. Mm -hmm. I feel like it's the perfect side with the steak and the creamy mashed cauliflower because this is definitely rich. So this just like really brightens it up a little bit, makes it feel a little bit lighter. Mm. Okay, I gotta stop eating this because I wanna be able to enjoy this with my husband tonight. Plus, I wanna get to making that dessert that I promised you so that we can complete this meal and enjoy something a little sweet after all of this delicious savoriness. All right, we are gonna be making our sweet treat. This is gonna take less than five minutes. This is seriously the best chocolate chip mug cake I hope you will ever eat because it is mine and I just, I cannot even say enough about how delicious this mug cake is. Okay, so we're gonna start out with our mug. This is about a 10 ounce size mug and we don't even need to grease it. I'm gonna add in a quarter cup of all purpose flour and then I'm gonna add in a quarter teaspoon of baking powder. This'll just help it rise nicely. I got that in there. And then we're gonna do two tablespoons of pretty packed brown sugar. Okay, so we'll add that two and then i'm just going to give this a stir with a fork actually i forgot the salt you want to do a little pinch of salt gotta have a little salt with your chocolate chip right okay so we're just going to give this a stir until this is all well combined and there aren't any more like chunks of brown sugar okay that looks pretty good now we're going to add in three tablespoons of milk you can use whatever kind of milk that you have this is just one percent so there's one, two, and three. And then you gotta add some butter because what is like chocolate chip cookies or mug cake without that butter flavor. So we'll add in two tablespoons of melted butter. And then we're gonna do a half a teaspoon of vanilla extract. I'm just gonna eyeball it because it's never too much for me, so. And now with a spoon, I'm just gonna give this a stir until it's well combined and you don't see any more like flour chunks in there so just stir it up here perfect and now i'm going to add in two tablespoons of mini chocolate chips you can do any kind of baking chip that you have on hand but i really like the mini chips in here i feel like they just distribute a whole lot better um, sometimes the bigger chips tend to kind of sink to the bottom okay so i'm just going to eyeball this so got one tablespoon about two and then we're gonna add a few more to the top. So I'm just gonna fold this in. Okay, so I'm gonna add a few more chips right to the top just to make it look pretty and just to display that we are having something with chocolate chips. Okay, this is gonna go into the microwave and I'm gonna microwave this for one minute and 30 seconds. You wanna cook it until the center kind of springs back when you touch the center and then the sides will pull away just a little bit. So definitely a minute and 30 seconds for my microwave, but you'll have to probably make adjustments depending on what kind of microwave you have and what kind of mug that you're putting the cake mix into. All right, it is time to taste this. Oh my gosh. So you can obviously put whatever you want over the top of this cookie. You don't even have to put anything, but I had some frozen Cool Whip in the freezer. So I just used a small cookie scoop and it basically acts like the ice cream. Plus it's not as sweet, which I love. When you guys try this mug cake, it's seriously dangerously good. Like, look at that. You guys. I just can't even get over how delicious this mug cake is. Any occasion. It doesn't have to be for anything special.
Mm. Well, I really hope that you enjoyed these recipes today and have some inspiration for a fun night in, whether it's date night or a special occasion or just want to have something really yummy to make this was a great meal and i am just excited for you guys to try it you'll have to let me know in the comments if you do also make sure to subscribe if you haven't already and to tap the little bell on the right hand side that will notify you every time i post a new video and all of the recipes can be found in the descriptions below so make sure to check those out i hope that you have a really blessed day and we will see you next time